It's my pleasure to welcome you to the Clark Howard Show, where our mission is to serve you and empower you so you make better financial decisions in your life. If you're enjoying this episode, please like and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. If you listen on Apple, please review the podcast on your app so other people know that you found us to be a good source of information for empowerment. And we begin today with Clark Stinks. And it's so fun for me to hear how I have messed up because how else do we learn? And also today is a very important day, a day that means deals. I'm going to talk to you about what is on deep discount right now. And without further ado, it is time for Clark Stinks. Clark Stinks like the leftover onion dip from Thanksgiving. His tale of Southwest travel woes over the Christmas holiday was both entertaining and appalling. He sacrificed days of precious family time for his incredibly tolerant wife because of his obsessive loyalty to the lower cost operator and his precious refunds and loyalty points. (laughs) Um, Let's see. There we go. I lost my place. Everyone knew Southwest was in chaos. If he'd simply rebooked on an operator that was actually flying from New York to Atlanta, he would have shown that he prioritized his spouse over his wallet And this time, this time, maybe think of it as a bonus Christmas present for Lane. Instead, you chose a ridiculous option, Subway to Amtrak to Uber to Reagan to Uber to Dulles to rental car to hotel to ATL. My niece had two Southwest (laughs) flights canceled from New York to the West Coast two days before Christmas. She rebooked on United at a reasonable fare and was home in time to enjoy maximum family time and all her favorite holiday traditions. Come on, Clark. There are times when you need to choose value over price. This was one of those times. And your wife is a saint. Cheers, Dan. Dan, okay, so I, I wish that we had shown the segments of when I was on my laptop at LaGuardia, then on my laptop at Reagan, trying to find flights on anybody else. And there were flat out no seats. Now remember, this was the eve of Christmas Eve and Christmas Eve. when Because when when our flight was canceled on the 22nd, I thought, oh, it's okay. And everybody was still trying to recover All the airlines were trying to recover from the winter storm still on the 22nd. But uh, when we hit the 23rd and 24th, I was like, "Uh uh-oh, this is bad. And I kept trying to find flights. And believe it or not, I could not find a flight at any fare, any price, out of any of the three New York area airports or uh, out of the three D.C. metro area airports. I also tried Philadelphia we were stuck as stuck could be. You mentioned that Walmart workers handle deliveries and shopping for Walmart Plus. This is not true. They use a contractor called DDI in most areas and implement what they call Walmart Spark. I am one of those drivers and I shop some orders and do delivery on all orders. In my area, not a small area by any means, about 50% of the orders are delivered by me, shopped by Walmart workers. The rest are shopped and delivered by me. Please educate yourself before speaking on these matters. And that's from gig worker. And another one, Clark, I live in Northeast Wisconsin and there is not a Walmart delivery van in sight. All of our deliveries are made exclusively with gig workers on the Spark app. And a tip goes a long way in me deciding if I take an order or not. I drive a Toyota Tacoma, but that will go through hell and back, but it won't go for minimum wage, bro. Chad. (laughs) Okay. Thank you both. So uh, it must be myopia on my part because uh, my Walmart Plus are delivered by a Walmart van that's electric, by the way. Hmm. And I see them going up and down the main street by me regularly. It's about three miles, three and a half miles from the Walmart that delivers to us and that store. And it is their delivery trucks that do the deliveries. So I appreciate that you're sharing with me that uh, many, most, if it uh, sounds like from what both posters said, mm-hmm. that it's routine that the Walmart Plus 
are being outsourced and not being done by Walmart itself. So that's my bad because it's my experience that mine are delivered by Walmart employees and Walmart trucks. Clark, you're smellier than a baby's diaper. Wait, wait. So already I'm worse than a Thanksgiving onion? Mm-hmm. Onion dip, right? Yeah, yeah. Now I'm worse than a baby's diaper? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Clark, okay, so you're smaller than a baby's diaper. A few weeks back, a caller asked how he and his wife can deal with two-factor authentication codes for accounts he and his wife share. What you should have suggested is create a shared Google account and signed up, sign up for a Google Voice phone number. If they both download the app and sign in, they can both receive the text directly to the phone. The best part is it is absolutely free. Joe. You know, Google Voice is one of the worst marketed services ever that has so much flexibility. And this is a wonderful thought and wonderful use of Google Voice that had not occurred to me. Uh, do you do that? No, I hadn't thought about it either. Good idea. I mean, this is why this is why we do Clark Stinks, to both correct my errors and to give better information than I have provided. Recently, you addressed a situation where an older couple loved their timeshare but didn't want their kids to have to deal with it as an inheritance. You advised them to return or exit, if they could, with a program from the original seller and to rent each year. But I thought you previously said that children can refuse to inherit timeshares. Clark seemed to indicate that you can refuse to inherit almost anything. I'm confused, Dan. Okay, so Dan, the advice that I've given over the years is, uh, and it's based on consulting with real estate lawyers we talked to we talked to i think five different ones on this topic is you refuse the inheritance and there's been a lot of fuss about whether or not that really is an effective strategy or not when uh, a loved one thinks they're doing you a favor by uh, giving you a timeshare as an inheritance when for you it may be anything but a favor so Dan, the answer is uh, the consensus we had from the lawyers we consulted with was that was the right strategy, but then we've had blowback that that is not necessarily effective. So the timeshare thing is tough because it kind of sticks to you like glue, and to think that it then can stick to future generations like glue makes them even uglier than before, and that's why... See, timeshares are truly a defective purchase. Even if you enjoy it while you own it, the problem is any product or service that is so impossible to sell and has essentially a perpetual obligation is defective in its nature. I don't think Clark stinks, but he missed something when talking about his son's choices on the way to become a pilot for a commercial airline. My spouse has flown for Delta for 32 years and was a civilized pilot. He said he and most of the guys he flies with think that joining the National Guard is the fastest and cheapest way to get training and the flight time needed to be hired by a major airline. This option lets you go to college either before or while in the Guard. Michelle. So, Michelle, we've only talked to Grant about uh, flying with the Guard or flying as a military pilot uh, weekly at least for the four years since he started flying. And it, it's just not something that we've been able to get him energized about. He is about to get his first level license, his PPL, and he's intending to go to traditional university that has a flight school attached to it. And the military option is one that, uh, even though in our family culture, Serving in the military is very much part of our culture. He just isn't there. Your advice doesn't stink too much in regards to the scholarship advice to the caller whose son is becoming a pilot, but I would recommend going a different route. Almost every passenger, major passenger and freight airline in the United States no longer require degrees and will often pay for advanced education as a form of retention benefits. The airline I worked for, the one with the face on the tail, does this. Alaska. And I finished my degree while on my overnights while making very nice money while doing so. Hours and certificates are much more important than degrees. First Officer Carlos. And Carlos, we need to hear back from you when you go from right seat to left seat. So um, the the airlines used to require a bachelor's degree in order to be a commercial airline pilot, professional pilot. And that is, I don't know if that's true with any 
of the airlines anymore. They just want to know that you can safely operate that plane and that the people behind the door, the cockpit door, are going to get to where they're supposed to be going safely. You smell worse than a Coke Zero burp. Haven't uh, heard that Coke one before. Zero burp. You wow. S- you suggest to a lot to a lot of listeners that they contact their local news station if they have an investigative reporter or on your side segment about a consumer problem as another resolution method. However, you never tell us what staff position to contact and the best method to contact to get the attention. Should it be phone, mail, email? You have a lot of experience in TV and probably take this information for granted. So please share the best practices for contacting local news outlets with us to achieve the best results so your listeners don't give up because they're lost. Thanks for all you do. Your advice has saved me thousands of dollars, Seth. Seth, thank you. All right, so... If a TV station has an on-your-side kind of report or segment or whatever, they will tell you at the end of the segments or on the website of the TV station, they'll tell you, uh, email us at this uh, email address or text us to this number or call this phone number because they're looking for the hot leads for good stories that will be compelling for viewers normally in a tv newsroom they don't want to hear from anybody Um, they may have a tip line for hot general stories but in the consumer kind of area it has to be something that's part of what that station does for them to uh, encourage to welcome your communication, and they will tell you at that station how they want to be contacted. So that's basically the drill on that. And there's an old joke in TV that if you call a TV newsroom, the person who answers the phone is going to be gruff and unfriendly (laughs) when you call. And uh, there are some funny little things people say about it that are not appropriate for the podcast. But it's completely different when they're looking for uh, hot leads or RPs, you know, real people who they can build a story about. And so it's got to be a station that makes this part of their branding, that they're there uh, looking for outrages or looking to help people and put them on TV and show they had a frown when we were talking to them and now they're all smiles because they got the big refund check or whatever it is. And most um, TV stations have websites. You can see if they're consumer reporters, they usually make their, their pieces into articles as well, and they'll have the email address for the person on there. There's also a contact us, so, and there should be an email address and phone. I would try every method, including social media. So uh, if what I'm saying and what Chris is saying, there is not like a generic strategy that works for every TV station in every market. It really depends on that individual station. Uh, Coming up ahead, a lot depends on the calendar. And I'm going to tell you why we are at the sweet spot right now of the calendar for a lot of great, great, great deals for your wallet. I'm going to fill you in. When does winter end? Winter ends, I guess, March 21st. 20th, 21st, right in there, first day of spring. So why is it that now in the third week of January, there are deals everywhere on winter-themed merchandise? It's the way it works. Retail always works almost a full season ahead. So you can walk in a store on a day that's really still cold wherever you are, And you'll see all kinds of spring merchandise going out on the shelves in the aisles. In fact, winter clothing is at its very best bargain prices right now towards the tail end of January. Uh, I've been buying clearance gear, and it's just insane how cheap it is. And... The website 32 Degrees, it's a clothing line, uh, they have been selling uh, spot sales, winter gear, at up to 80% off. And a lot of it more than 50% off in these spot sales. 
Sam's Club last week jumped the gun because usually it's the third week of January that you see all these sales roll out. Sam's Club has been selling their leftover winter outerwear at deep, deep markdowns. And so I've been a buyer of some of that stuff so that for future winners, I've got really, really inexpensive winter clothing. And so this is one of the categories that has the greatest opportunity. And it works like this. Like you think about, okay, bathing suits in the summer. When do bathing suits go on the shelves in store? Typically, you're going to see them very early spring. And then by midsummer, that's when bathing suits and various summer kind of sportswear is already on clearance when summer has a lot to run. In merchandise of a season, it's why uh, in midsummer on Clark deals, we had all these deals on outdoor grills because people buy their grills if they're buying a new grill in the spring because they're anticipating warmer, better weather. And it's part of the innate optimism of a human being that we're buying them anticipating the weather's going to steadily get better. And so by the time you're in key grilling season or cookout season or barbecue season, whatever you call it, that's when they're already going on the clearance rack as bargains. So right now, so much is a deal. And airfares that were so ridiculously high in 22 have repeatedly been on sale here in January for travel further into the year. And if you're interested in going to Europe, Europe fares last year were so escalated because a lot of people had unused credits from 20 and uh, in 21, that they, uh, and there was pent up demand, what they call revenge travel. And so the airfares from the US to Europe were so elevated. Now those airfares have come down. There are a lot of deals. And you buy uh, the deals for a future date if the date's covered right now. Like, for example, I was helping a friend look at fares to Europe just the other day. And there were really great deals for September here in January. That's unusual to see that. But the fares were 300, 300 and something round trip to Poland for travel in September which from Chicago, which was very, very cheap. And here it was available right now in January. So know that the calendar is your friend. There are or your enemy, depending on how you buy pattern. When other people are zigging, you zag, and you steal the deal. Anything you think of that that you're seeing great deals on right now? Gosh, well, of course, I, I mean, I found an incredible deal on a winter coat, like a really great brand for my daughter, who goes to school in the Northeast and still is going to need it for a while. Let's and go further north. She's in New England. Yeah. It's really cold in Boston. And so she, like we were looking, and I couldn't believe how many bargains there were already. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like everything's on sale right now. Like the retailers are struggling, unfortunately, for the economy. I you just see, I'm seeing deals and sales at stores that normally don't have them constantly so yeah, and and the real pressure in this market's not on the big chains you know the big chains have the deep pockets generally to be able to deal with the ebbs and flows of economic strength and what's happening with inflation and all the rest it's the small locally owned retailer that is really really having a tough time right now facing cost pressures on labor maybe higher rent costs, and at the same time, what they can sell the products, the goods in their stores for is dropping. It's a tough combination. I do want to say uh, there's a big retailer of uh, athletic wear that years ago, I remember I went into their store and I asked if they had a sale rack and they kind of were, they, they kind of laughed at me and said, we don't do sales. 
And now I'm getting emails from that retailer about sales like every other week. It's kind of interesting. But um, okay. Is that the one that I always mess up the pronunciation no, of? No, it's a different one. Okay. Edward in Connecticut <laughs> says, I-series bonds have been a hot topic in the last year. I haven't heard much about EE-series bonds, though. The, se the current rate for the life of a new purchase is 2.1%. Obviously, there are better rates out there, but if and when we get back to a quote-unquote normal inflation, won't a 2.1% rate look like a great deal? Are double E series bonds now a good idea for me to put some of my savings? So I would say that I would not buy series double E's. And now you're asking me to look in a 30-year crystal ball. And that's hard <laughs> on, to Clark. do. What's that? You can do it. You think so? I mean, I'd be 97 in 30 years. Think I'll still be around now. You will be, yes, no, absolutely. No, I will not be. Anyway, so the the uh, Series I's have a significant advantage for purchase right now that makes them uh, the superior choice. Series I savings bonds historically came with two interest rates, and in recent years, only one. Now they're back to two. So what happens is you get the rate of inflation, whatever that is, plus 0.4 of a percent, almost half a percent of interest. So you get that no matter what, plus the rate of inflation. And that, that calculation where you're always moving ahead of inflation is something that savings accounts generally don't do. And a 2.1 in a Series EE won't do that. Now, the goal of 2% inflation in the economy, it's going to be a while before we're back to 2%. So, uh, you know, people won't be in a panic if we're at 3 but if you're earning 2.1 on your Series EEs, you're falling one percentage point behind, where with the Series I, you'll be 0.4 ahead. So that's why I think the Series Is are likely a superior choice even looking down the road because you're getting the 0.4 of a percent bonus. And Matthew in California says, my car was hit, there were no injuries, and I have other part, the other party's information. Her insurance took care of the repairs, but they don't provide a rental, just reimbursement. I couldn't afford a rental, so I'm filling a loss of use claim. How do I make sure that I get a fair settlement? What sneaky tricks will the insurance company use? So, all right, first of all, uh, I want to tell you that uh, this, what state is California. This? Oh, California. They're, uh, the, the guilty party, I'm using that expression, the party at fault in the accident, their insurer is responsible for providing you with a rental car while your vehicle is being repaired. That is clear under California's insurance statute as it would be in most states. So I would contact the California Insurance Department and file a complaint against the at-fault driver's insurance company because they owe you the rental car because the idea of auto insurance as the person who was not at fault is you're supposed to, in theory, be made whole. Now, you ask, how do you make sure that you're treated fairly from the insurer? If the insurer is already playing dirty, you may face a circumstance where you've got to have a lawyer represent you in your battle with the other insurance company. Because if they're not doing right by you already, then what's going to happen when you're trying to file the supplementary claim you're talking about for loss of use? So they, I wonder if they are allowed to have you rent the car and then reimburse you. Like, is it too late? Like you already ate the sandwich because the car was already repaired, do you think? Or No, no. If 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 you uh, had expense renting a car. He couldn't rent one. He couldn't afford it. That's what he's saying. He couldn't afford it. And they did, just wanted to do reimbursement. And so now he wants to file a loss of use because he wasn't able to have a car during that time. So this is a case where you would want to consult with the ins state insurance department because the thing about auto insurance or homeowners insurance is you'll always hear me talk about generalities unless we know a specific circumstance with the state. The reason is insurance is has joint uh, regulation depending on the type of insurance, federal or state. But 
Insurance primarily falls under state law and state regulation. And auto insurance almost exclusively, I think insurance departments would say exclusively, under state jurisdiction. And that's why talking to your state insurance department in California is going to be key here to see how you protect your rights. And ultimately, you may be forced to get a lawyer who goes after the insurer for you. Usually, that's free. They make them free. Free to you because they make their money from going after the other insurance company. Mary in Georgia wants to know if it's safe to renew a passport online. And desirable. Okay, I need to explain what's going on. The U.S. Passport Office for a long time thought it was still 1970. (laughs) And they are phasing in through a series of wider and wider experiments where people can renew an existing passport completely online. You don't even have to submit the old passport anymore. If you were offered the opportunity to use the new streamlined online only, and you're not sending a whole satchel of personal documents, that is actually much safer than the way they've done it for these years. And I just welcome them to the 21st century (laughs) at the U.S. State Department going to the online renewal of passports. And I'm hoping that it will go from being a limited number of people allowed to do this, that sometime in 23, it will become the way renewals are done. So I want to thank you so much for being with us today. Don't forget, we serve you 24 hours a day. The sun never sets on our consumer advice empire. So Clark.com, ClarksDeals.com, we work tirelessly to serve you every single day of the year so that you are empowered for your wallet. And when you go to buy something, you spend less of that wallet to buy it. 